like to call it like releasing weight because I instead of losing weight because I think that's what happens. I know that's why when I was reading that yeah. I was like did I did I write that wrong releasing no. an energy gain yeah, yeah. release because I think you know you can't force your body to do something you have to allow it mm -hmm. so it's like and then it will let it go like it when will it's let like, go oh, I don't need this anymore so that's what that's what happens mm -hmm. that that you resist will persist yes <laughs> damn <laughs> <laughs> the truth. <laughs> and the truth shall set you free, Lori. Exactly. <laughs> Woo End the podcast. Hi, and welcome back to Chilling with Ice. I'm your host, Lori Fetrick, and I'm the former American Gladiator Ice Ice Baby. We are Chilling with Ice. Hi, and welcome back to Chilling with Ice. I'm your host, Lori Fetrick, and today we have a very special guest with us. I'm very excited to sit and speak with her. Now, this subject, men is geared a little bit towards women, but I'm putting something in here right now because of the fact that you should stay tuned and listen to this because if you have a girlfriend, a wife, a mom, a sister, somebody, they might be going through some hormonal changes and you need to know why and you need to know how to deal with them. I want to introduce my guest today. Her name is Bria Gad. She's a functional diagnostic nutritional practitioner. Did I get that right? Nutrition practitioner, but yeah. Nutri nutrition practitioner, yeah. holistic health coach, and certified personal trainer who specializes in female hormones, helping women with weight loss, release, and energy gain in pre- and post-menopause, and finding clarity in hormonal chaos. After helping thousands of women lose weight in their 20s and 30s, Bria recognized a difficult shift in women's ability to get results in their body during their perimenopause years. With more than 12 years of experience in the fitness and nutrition industry, Bria created a proven strategy to, what is it? To dramatically improve the changes, the challenges women are experiencing, experiencing, I can't even talk today, in weight release and energy. Her podcast is The Period Whisperer, which is the number one wellness podcast in the world and with Instagram following over 17,000. Bria has been featured on Fox News, so everybody give her a warm welcome. I am so happy to sit down and just talk with her on different things. So welcome thank to you. Chilling with Ice <laughs> in the studio. You. And thanks thank for coming you. in person. Uh, thank you. So, I'm so cool. happy to be here. I know I it's it. so great to meet, meet face to face. God, how did, okay, how did you even get into this? Yeah. I mean, where did you... Tell, what were you like as a kid? We have like 30 <laughs> wow. minutes and okay. sum it all up in two. <laughs> uh, I think, I mean, as a kid, I was shy. <laughs> but no, I, um, that's, a, that's a big ask. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. What was really? I like as a kid? Yeah. I think I've always been pretty like driven. I can be a little quiet, but I love being around people. I don't know. That's, that's a tough question, Lori. I, I'll tell you my story more. How did I get into oh this? Maybe that's a bit easier. <laughs> It's easier to ask other people. Uh, so I was, um, I have been in the wellness industry for about 15 years now, and I kind of built this business in as a, as a trainer and a tr nutrition coach for, you know, since I was about 27. Okay. Um, I did it kind of working around raising my kids. And uh, <gasps> how many kids do you have? I have two. I had no idea. Yes. How old are they? They are almost 16 and 13. Oh. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's really great going through perimenopause when your kids are going through puberty. <laughs> Really oh, whatever. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. And uh, I, you know, <laughs> I loved it. I mean, I love being in the wellness industry. Like I loved that aspect. And then when I was around the age of 35, we just made this big move across country. And I really started to notice a shift first in my clients where it was like, they just weren't getting the same results. They didn't have the same energy. Their cycles were kind of getting in the way. Uh, and then it started happening to me for mm. me around 37. And I was like, you know, you think you, like, I don't have everything figured out in life, but I'm like, I, I thought I had my fitness and nutrition sorted. And for me, it really started like this, you know, low grade fatigue and some brain fog, some irregular cycles and, um, and what I like to call undeserved weight gain. Like when you're doing the same thing and, and all of a sudden you're gaining weight and you don't understand why, um, and some anxiety. And then the real kicker for me is I stopped sleeping well at night. Mm. And that was like, okay, I need to go and see my healthcare practitioner. And she was great. She asked all the questions, did all the blood work and looked at me and was like, well, Bria, you're the picture of health. And I was like, I can't, this can't. Yeah, like, like why do I feel this way? If this is how I'm going to feel <laughs> right. at 30, and I'm 37, yeah. like I'm not doing the next yeah. 40 years, you know, like that's, it was just way <laughs> too much to imagine. And it was, it was like a, a real, I was really glad I didn't have any of the awful things that come up when you're like Googling things when yeah. you're awake at two to 4 a.m. But uh, I was like, no. Like, this is just not it. And 
And I looked around and I've, I could see women, you know, that are older than I am that were thriving. And I'm like, no, this is not, I can't. This You're is like, not how do I get there? Yeah, not doing this. Um, and that was what really, you know, dove, you know, drove me into um, functional health and understanding female hormones specifically and, and really unlearning a lot of stuff that wasn't right and just better understanding mm. this piece. And I think at the end of the day, mm. I was like, if I don't know these things and I'm in the wellness industry and I've worked with thousands of women, mm -hmm. how on earth is the average woman who's, you know, average like me, but, you know, does a job that's not in the wellness industry, how is she going to ever know how to do these things? I'll be honest. We had no idea. Yeah. And I say we, because I think, I don't know how old you are. I am 42, almost 43. <gasps> Just a baby. Oh, I love that. I love you. 19 years apart? Yes. Yeah. My girlfriend's 43. Okay. So it's, it's she's going through it. Mm -hmm. So I know it, it. But I get to laugh and yeah. smile. <laughs> Only because like I've been there so yeah. I can understand. Yeah. And this is something that it, it thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing this for women because yeah. as I was going through it, there was no women talking about it. Nobody yeah. talked about menopause. Nobody talked about perimenopause more or less menopause, perimenopause. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, damn, now we got to think about that yeah. part of it. Yeah. And I remember times, seriously, times that I was irritable. I was just, ugh. Yeah. Life sucked. Yeah. Brain fog, fuzziness, no sex drive, um, no energy, no drive to do anything. Just, I, I call it, I felt dead inside. Oh, just hurts. Yeah. And it does. Yeah. It literally almost physically does hurt, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, and I see women going through this mm -hmm. and um, you're absolutely right. It's not just hormones. It's everything else that's going along with it. Their wellness. Yeah. Absolutely. Because once you start into it and it's like, how are you sleeping? What are you eating? Yeah. What are you drinking? Mm -hmm. How are you treating your body? Mm -hmm. Because all these symptoms you're having are just worse. Yeah, absolutely. And sometimes the biggest question is like, when was the last time you did something just for you? Oh, I know. And most of them are like tear up and don't. And, and I get it. I mean, this is what happens in society these days, but it plays a much bigger role than we think. Mm -hmm. And women can go to different hormone doctors if they want to and they try to. Yeah. But if they don't deal with the underlining of what's happening with yeah. their stress yes. and their sleeping and their eating, it doesn't matter what they take. Oh, yeah. It's Lori. not going to help. Absolutely. It's not going to fix a problem. Yeah. And I have a friend like that. Yeah. Uh, we all have a friend like exactly. that. Exactly. I was that person. So yeah. I, you know, I absolutely understand. I think, you know, part of what I love about being in this industry and, and talking about this conversation as it goes is like, I really think we need to change the lens on perimenopause because I really think it happens for us and not to us. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's the time in our life when the universe kind of comes to like rattle us so much that we finally stop ignoring the shit that we, you know, that we have swept under the rug for so long yeah. and address it. Because if you do not address it, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, the fact that you're not addressing, you know, habits that you have that maybe aren't great that are causing a lot of issue inside and therefore impacting the things on the outside of you, or the fact that you're ignoring a lot of the problems on the outside of you. Maybe you're miserable in your career. Maybe you're miserable in your relationship. Maybe you haven't dealt with some past trauma. Mm -hmm. All of that is coming down now because if you don't deal with it at like 40 to 50. Oh, you're screwed. You're screwed. <laughs> but if you do, I mean, we're talking like another four decades of yeah. like golden girl life here that yeah. you get to have. And, and it doesn't go away. That. No. It actually gets bigger. Yeah. It gets bigger and it's bigger in your face. Yeah, you absolutely. Know? And they, I think what women think and they hope for yeah. is, oh, this will go away. Yeah. Uh-uh. It, it just gets bigger and bigger and, until you deal with it. Yeah. And I have noticed on the other side of menopause that my weight and my, you know, lifting weights and training and everything yeah. just in the last, I'm going to say probably couple years mm -hmm. to where I got my stress under control. I got my sleeping under control, my eating's under control. And all of a sudden, literally, and it's the weirdest thing in the world, like the weight's just falling off me. The body fat is just dripping off me. And I'm just like, how is this possible? To where now I'm like, oh, I have to eat. Yeah. I have to actually eat more. Yeah. To where before I was like, don't eat this, yeah. don't eat that. You know, I was always watching what I ate. But now I'm like, are you kidding? I can yeah. eat that. And, yeah. and nothing's. It's because all the stressors yeah. in my body have actually like, just 
yeah. calm down. Because you dealt with your shit. And my, yeah, my body's responding to it. And yeah. it's responding in a way that it's just, it feels amazing. Mm -hmm. So I like to call it like releasing weight because I, instead of losing weight, because I think that's what happens. I know, that's why when I was reading that, yeah. I was like, did I, did I write that wrong? Releasing no. an energy gain. Yeah, yeah. release. Because I think, you know, you can't force your body to do something. You have to allow it. Mm -hmm. So it's like, and then it will let it go. Like it when will it's let like, go. Oh, I don't need this anymore. So that's what, that's what happens. Mm -hmm. That that you resist will persist. Yes. <laughs> Damn. The truth. <laughs> and the truth shall set you free, Lori. Exactly. <laughs> Woo and the podcast. Oh, boy. So good. But no, it's it's um, talking about the perimenopause. Yeah. Um, it's I know that we just um, before we did this podcast, we had another little podcast. So yeah. a lot got said. So yeah. it's like, OK, where do we go with this? Yeah. Now? yeah. But um, so many people need to know what's happening in their yeah. body. So can you talk to me a little bit about what happens in perimenopause that women can actually start looking for? Yeah. And maybe identify things. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, there's three main things that start to happen in perimenopause, which, by the way, I think we talked about this already, but starts for all women around the age of 35, like a reverse puberty. Like it is as significant as puberty. It is as significant as pregnancy and postpartum. And it lasts like 20 years. So it's oh. a big deal. And it's a shame that it hasn't been talked about for so long. Um, but here we are. We're unveiling it. We're talking more about it and making it normal. Um, and, and it needs to be made normal. It's normal. It needs to be talked talked about. It's okay for yeah. us to talk about these things. Yeah, this is us becoming us 3.0, yes. you know, like it is time for us, you know, in to, it's like our second spring, it's our new chapter. So it's like, let's embrace this cocoon and let's come out to the like, other side. It used to be like this, menopause. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a dirty word, like yes. your period. And you're yeah. like, okay, come on now. This is where life actually begins. Yes. So uh, three main things are happening. I think about it as um, one, the job of the hormones is being passed from the ovaries to your adrenal. Our adrenals are our stress managers. The state of those adrenals when this begins is going to determine a lot about your symptoms. So if you have been, you know, living a very high stress life, if you have been burning the candle at both ends, if you're eating things that add stress to your body, it's going to be a lot harder and you're going to have a lot more symptoms. The amount of our hormones are decreasing, um, which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. I think we've been told it's like, oh, we're getting old and shriveling up. But I like actually the way I look at it is from puberty until now, we've been hormonally hijacked every single month to make us amenable to procreate, to, to prioritize those humans over ourselves yes. and therefore prioritize everyone else over ourselves. Now that's going away. And we get to really feel how we feel yeah. every damn day of the month. Yeah. And do you know how much faster you can get stuff done in your life when you're not half the month thinking one way and half the month thinking another? So I think it's a really cool time for that. So yeah. this, and, and then the last piece that I think women need to really be aware of is um, what's going on in our brain. And the fluctuation of these hormones uh, does impact the memory encoders and retrievers in our brain, uh, where, where we really become a lot more aware of the stuff that we haven't dealt with. Mm -hmm. You know, I think a lot of women talk about like menorrhage, rage, but it's like sometimes <laughs> I think of it as if the dishes in the dishwasher again or on the, in the sink instead of the dishwasher again are yeah. pissing you off, it's because you're not being heard, not because there's dishes in the dishwasher. Absolutely. And it's time to start addressing the fact that you're not being heard or not being respected or whatever Well, that now you're is. just getting into therapy. Oh, <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. I didn't mean to. I'm just like, pay attention to what your body is joking. You <laughs> Sorry. You're not being heard. You're not being seen. Well, but I mean, like, <laughs> let's recognize where the no, range is No, you're absolutely right, from. though. You're yeah. absolutely right. And that's something that, like you said before you're not dealing with your shit. Yes. So yeah. if you're not dealing with it, That's it's going to come bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger. Yeah. And it's just going to explode yes. is what happens. Yeah. And this is and the, the gift small of little things yeah. are huge. Absolutely. And then you just kind of go, and, the, and when you point it at somebody and they're that huge, the person on the other yeah. end's going, oh my God, what did I do? Yeah, absolutely. So you to know? answer your question about like what we'll be noticing, like, you know, the stressors that you have going in your life are going to get louder and make mm -hmm. more of an issue with your symptoms. You know, if your hormones aren't, if you're already dealing with a hormone imbalance or the things in your life are creating a greater hormone imbalance, this like fluctuation of them is going to be way worse. And it's going to show up in our sleep and it's going to show up in our libido and it's going to show up in our training or our results from our training. Um, and, and we're absolutely going to get more annoyed about the things that we haven't dealt with for so long. So it's like, it's your dark night of the soul moment to be like, okay, now we're never let's change yeah 
And let's talk about, you know, how food and exercise actually impact the perimenopause, you know, menopause, the whole entire yeah. 25, 30 years of your life afterwards. The exercise and the diet part of it is crucial. That's yeah. the other thing. You can't ignore those things no. when your hormones are up and down and no. all over the place. No. They're super sensitive at this yes. point in time. And, you know, it's like we're going from, you know, like walking on solid ground to walking on a suspension bridge. Mm -hmm. And we can I always look at it like if you imagine our health as a dining table with four legs, you know, each of these legs is like a pillar of our health. Sleep, movement, nutrition, stress management, which encompasses our joy, mm -hmm. I would say. And if one of those legs is rickety, like we don't have it nailed, like it's a little irritating, but you know, we're okay with this dining experience. If two are, every time someone puts their elbow on the table, we're gonna get annoyed. Right. But we're still gonna fold something up and shove it under and stay at the table. If three are bad, the meal's on the table and, and so is your health, in yeah. other words. So we really need to look to these pieces and solidify, if you haven't figured this piece out for you right now, now is the time to figure it out because it's gonna make, your, it has a lot to do with your circadian rhythm, which mm -hmm. you need foundationally strong before we start to look at the infradian rhythm, the, the female hormones. Can you explain what circadian rhythm is? Because my mother was listening to your podcast oh. and she went, huh? Oh, <laughs> and interesting. I went, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So your circadian rhythm is our 24 hour um, cycle that every, every, a lot of animals and plants have it too, but all humans, men and women have it. And it's, you know, it's really dictates our sleep, wake and hunger cues mm -hmm. specifically. Um, so it's, you know, it's the reason we get tired at night and we should be awake in the morning and that we should be hungry a few times in the day. So in, in a typical circadian rhythm, we wake up with the most energy, like our highest cortisol levels in the morning. Um, it has a pretty, you know, strong dip by noon and then it slowly decreases until the, you know, till bedtime so that we can, you know, get all the benefits of melatonin coming in and we can have a great night's sleep and repeat. Right. So it kind of dictates that 24 hour energy clock within us. And it's the one we're born with. Mm -hmm. So if, even though we get two rhythms, this is why women are great multitaskers because we have two. Yeah. But if you don't have a solid circadian rhythm, so if your sleep, if you're not consistent with your sleep, your sleep's crappy, if your nutrition is off or you're not eating regularly, then your circadian rhythm is off. And it's, and trying to deal with your female sex hormones without that is like trying to build a house on quicksand. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and if you're not dealing with the stress that comes along with that, yeah. everything is that much more out of whack. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you're not sleeping, you're not eating, you can't really exercise because you don't have the, the energy. Yeah. You know, and then it becomes like this vicious cycle. Absolutely. And then you just, feel like shit and yeah. you don't understand why yeah. you feel so bad. Absolutely. But here's the worst part is when somebody brings it to your attention and they're just like, whatever. You're like, okay, feel like shit the rest of your life. I don't yeah. care. <laughs> you know, I can't, I can only lead a horse to water, you know, but I want to tell these women, the ones that, that are like that, it's just like, do you know how good it feels to have energy and to feel good yeah. and to sleep yeah. I mean, I remember those nights though, the, yeah. the hot, cold, hot, cold, yeah. night sweats. Oh, it was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it's not just, I mean, that's a very real thing. It's but, so real. But you don't, until you have your circadian rhythm solid, those yeah. foundations, you don't know if the reason you're waking up in the night is because of this or because your Correct. hormone production. 100%. So it's like you have, it's like if you want to know whether you can get help and you want your body to be ready for that help by taking, you know, hormones if you need it or so, we've got to do that underlying work first. Otherwise, you might take hormones when you don't need hormones or you're not metabolizing those hormones or you're not absorbing and you're you're kind of making it just messier than it already is. True. And now tell me what you think and what your belief is on um, HGH, human growth hormone. Like there are peptides that you can actually spark your own growth hormone. So you're not taking growth hormone, but you're actually taking a peptide that stimulates mm -hmm. your own mother hormone, hormone of all hormones. Yeah, I think uh, again, like I think like anything, I think of supplements as like really great tools mm -hmm. and um, when you're when you're trying out a tool, you want to make sure you have some good constants in your life. So as long as you've done the underlying work mm -hmm. to try something, I'm not as familiar with HGH, I have to say. So, but if it's, it's a supplement that we take, 
I don't know why. I'm staring at you right now because I'm like, are you kidding? <laughs> HGH, really? Okay. Yeah, it's not one of the hormones I'm as familiar with dealing with. Yeah. Okay. Human growth hormone. Human growth hormone is the the one mother hormone of all hormones. Right. Basically. Like I, I do know yeah, that. Yeah, yeah okay, no, I yeah, know what yeah, it is, yeah, but okay. how do we That's take it? Like, it's not oh, one that oh, I oh, talk okay, to. So, Sorry. Okay. So basically, it dies out at 30. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So, yes. No, I know what it is. Let me be clear. I know what it is. <laughs> That's why I was like, but I'm like, how are you like, taking it? Wait a minute. We're these. talking hormones. You don't know it. No, no. I know no, what no, it no. is. Okay, so, but it's not one so, that I, yeah. There, there are peptides out there that actually will stimulate your own growth yes. hormone yeah. at nighttime. Yeah. And you can either take it in the evening to help muscle growth. Yeah. Or you can take it in the morning to stimulate more fat loss. Right. Let's put it this way. Yeah. You can either take it as sublingual. Uh-huh. Or a peptide, little tiny insulin syringe in the fat. Okay. It has to be in the fat part of your either underarm here, yeah. fat of your belly, fat of your butt, yeah. even a thigh. But it, it works through the fat cells. Yeah. And okay. so basically what it does is it just stimulates mm -hmm. your own HGH. Your own HGH, It's yes. not a synthetic. A lot of people um, have noticed that it actually helps. Yeah. It helps with their other hormones as well. Right. I mean, everything goes hand in hand. Of you. course. I mean, it's like you're between your your estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, uh, you know, you're, you're stimulating your HGH. I mean, all these different hormones that are so needed, even like your thyroid. Yeah. I didn't realize how important thyroid was oh, for our hormones. Oh my gosh, massive. I had no idea. Yeah. You know, and the first time I went to my doctor and she goes, your thyroid's a little low, we need to put you on thyroid. And I'm like, I'm only 40, what are you talking about? Yeah. And she goes, it will help your hormones. Yeah. 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 I, I had someone explain it to me once as it's almost like our body, you know, like all the metabolic functions of our body are like an orchestra, mm -hmm. you know, and when, when one of the things goes off, if the trumpet goes off, then the, you know, then the piano is going to go off, the winds are going to go off and so off. on. And then some, and then sometimes we go and we think like, oh, I just need to fix the trumpet, but it's like, mm, by now everyone's off tune. We got to kind of come in and fix everyone, unfortunately, because they're playing an entirely different song. So it's no yeah. longer jingle bells. Absolutely. Yeah. It's no longer. <laughs> but what were you saying? Oh, now? we were talking about HGH. So I know what it is because right, I didn't okay, know good. how we take it. If you were talking about like in the oh, injections, if you, you were right, talking right, about, right, sorry, right. so I needed some clarity. Well, no, there. I was just asking that question because yeah. there, there's a lot of things out there that a lot of people are now like kind of taking and doing things yeah. with their workouts. But the the basic bottom line that I love about your yourself and your programs or anything yeah. is wellness. Yes. Sleep, like you said, nutrition, exercise, everything goes in hand. Get that stress under control. Yeah. Because, you know, many years ago I heard stress is a killer. Yeah. And I always thought like, you know, what I remember back yeah. then was stress, you know, like mm -hmm. stress from work. No, stress is everything, it's everything in our body. Yeah. You know, I when I went to my doctor the very first time for my yeah. hormones, I was, I was 40 and I was like, what's going on? Yeah. I'm feeling weird. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this isn't normal. Yeah. And she goes, your body is under so much stress and you have absolutely no idea about it. Yeah. And that kind of blew Head my mind stress. because I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. Yeah. And I always, I'm, I'm the, I'm the, um, I'm the Aries that. Oh, you're I'm an Aries. Yeah, I know you're a Scorpio. <laughs> anyway, I'm the Aries that goes, oh my God, am I going to die? <laughs> you know, I'm a hypochondriac. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. But yeah, when she told me that, yeah. it opened my eyes. Yeah. I think a lot of women don't, I certainly was one too, we don't realize how stressed we get really, you know, especially high functioning women, they get really good at like functioning through that stress. Yes. But when our stress is chronic, like our body is meant to handle acute stress, so short term stress. So when it is up in there that entire time, then we are like all of our hormone production is inhibited, no matter what hormones we're talking about yeah. now that we're talking about them all. And, um, and that stress can come from like known external stressors, like things we know are stressful, like the things we eat or even even workouts, which we know mm -hmm. are stressful in, in, in a good way. It can come from hidden internal stressors. So like, do we have a parasite? You know, is our gut health off? You know, are, the, is, are our hormones off? And that's all going to create stress. And it can come from like what I think hidden external stressors. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you aren't dealing with things that you should be dealing with. You've got toxins in the products and everything all around you. So it comes from all of the areas and if we're not mitigating that in some way like it's going to come to a head at this time it's going to happen yeah. and when you talked about like the foods mm -hmm. i mean we talk about you know exercise and diet and you know americans are more obese nowadays yeah. than they ever were 
and yet there's more gyms now. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you look at a picture. Somebody said this to me one time, and it was, and it's mind blowing if you think about it. If you look a picture at a picture of Woodstock, mm-hmm. remember the concert? Yeah, of course. All right, so you look <laughs> at that picture, and it's very, very, very hard to find an overweight person in yeah. that crowd. Yeah, I've seen things like this before. And yet, yeah, there was no gyms back mm-hmm. then, really. Like you know, big box gyms like we have now. Yeah, our food supply, terrible processed foods, the sugars, yeah. um, the chemicals, the, chemicals, the yeah. toxins, everything. Our bodies don't know what to do with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so it's going to go haywire. And it's like our hormones are going to pay the price. Our The fat cells, yeah. everything's going to pay the price. Yeah. We just don't know how to deal with all of that. Yeah. And it's sad. It is. And of course, youth is forgiving. So a lot of us did a lot of these things for years and years and years. But now we've kind of run out of that vital energy in our body because it's been so like we're born with a certain amount of capacity to handle mm-hmm. stress. But at, by the time you reach 40, like you're running low on that stuff. And now is when I think it really starts to show up. And of course, perimenopause comes in as this great energy demand again. And now we're like in the toilet pretty fast. And I think that's where it runs in. But yeah, nutrition is, I think before we hit the gym, like it really should be the first piece that is figured out for people. Mm -hmm. And I will be the first one to admit that I used to work very hard at working out a bad diet for a very long time. Tell me what you mean by that. I just... (laughs) <laughs> I didn't want to admit that, that I had the sugar addiction that like, like I was Lori, I was like, what was oh, your sugar addiction? Oh, Tell me like, what were you eating? Chocolate, always chocolate for me. Like, was it huge, like all the time? Was it oh, like a nighttime yeah. only? Like, was if, it like, if I made brownies, like I would be eating that with my coffee at breakfast after my breakfast. Like it's, wow. I just had deserted all the meals. Okay. But you know, when you're young and you're working out a lot. Have you always been thin? No. I mean, I gained 65 pounds with my first pregnancy. Wow. And I, but I'm the leanest and fittest I've ever been in my life now mm-hmm. because I understand how my body works. There you because go. I understand how to support my there hormones. There you go. Yeah. And the best part is that I'm not thinking, like I'm not cyclically thinking about food the way I did when yes, I was younger. Yes, I used to obsess about oh, it. Oh my gosh. Like when am I going to eat next? Yes. Should I eat this? Should I not eat this? Did I eat enough? Should I eat, did I eat too much? Like what, you know, it's, it's exhausting. It is. Women. You think about what could I have accomplished in my life if I hadn't been so, like if that hadn't been taking up so much space in my brain for yeah. so long. And it is a very freeing thing. And, you know, I think one of my favorite things to hear from my clients when, when they're like, oh, like I went from lunch to dinner and I didn't think about food. I'm like, imagine what else you could think about. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I have gotten to the point to where I get so busy in my, in my day to day that I have to, I have to remember to eat, Yeah, mm-hmm. which is like just weird for Same. me. I was never one of those people. Me neither. Yeah. I was like every three hours is like, where's my meal? Where's my meal? You know, it's three hours up because yeah. I'm hungry. Yeah. yeah. You know, um, I was hungry after I finished the last one. Exactly. Yeah. I yeah. mean, my girlfriend is like one of the per- she's prime example of we'll eat lunch. And like an hour later, she's like, what's for dinner? And I'm uh, like, we just ate, I know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I'm just, I, she's like, I'm just, just thinking, you yeah, know, yeah. and I just never, and she's not, she's thin, she's not yeah. overweight. She just, her metabolism so fast that she's mm. like, okay, what's next? Does you she know? know her metabolic type? In um, terms of like- I've, she's been training with me for the last year. Yeah. Okay. Pretty proud of her. She ah. really just kicked it up she's awesome. she's almost as strong as i am oh that's amazing. her body has changed oh, she's wow. put on the muscle she stopped weighing herself oh, um that. her shoulders have come in her abs everything i mean she just and she's not really even thinking about it. she's just going and training wow, that's and that's like it, that's like the best way it's like when people come to me and they're just like well where do you get the motivation how do you continue to go to the gym every day yeah. i just don't think about it i just do it it's yeah. part of my day it's like going to work I have to go to work, so I have to go to the gym. Yeah, and in fact, you reach a point, I think, when you create that consistency in like a habit that is good for your body Mm -hmm. where you feel weird when you don't do it. Absolutely. And I think that's kind of the goal, isn't it? That's when you know it's become a part of you when you're like, oh, I feel off if I haven't like served my body today. I literally wish that I felt like I do now. Mm -hmm. I wish that when I was in my, you know, late 30s, early 40s, I felt as good as you do then as I do today. Yeah. And it's just a matter of... Like, what's changed? 
You know how they always say, um, the older you get, the wiser you get. Yeah. Uh, the older you get, you just call yourself on your shit quicker. Yeah. You know, I and, like and that. you do. You just call yourself on. You kind of have time to lie to myself anymore. Exactly. It's just like, <laughs> just, oh my god, there I am again. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just this is who I am. This yeah. is you know, and you either deal with it mm-hmm. and just go, everything is fine, and just relax and let go of that stress. And you're going to eat what you're going to eat. And I'm, I'm starting, here's my whole thing. I'm starting to appreciate my body. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, uh-huh. finally, at this age, yeah. I'm starting to appreciate it because I look in the mirror and we all have body dysmorphia somehow, some way, Yeah, you know, and it's, I can rip myself apart like you would not believe. <sighs> but yet people look at me and go, oh my God, how do you look like that? How can I get like that? Yeah, You know, but we all have our own. Shit yeah. that we talk to ourselves about in the mirror. And, Absolutely. And I just, it's you real. just have to let it go. Yeah. Just let it go. Enjoy life. Enjoy. The, I'm, I'm trying to enjoy the way I look as much as I can right now and enjoying yeah. the ride yeah. is really what it comes down to. I love that. I, that's a great story. I remember in my 20s sitting with some friends and someone was like, uh, you know, like, doesn't everybody hate their body? And one of my, and I remember being like, yep. And then I had one friend that was like, no, I really love my body. And I remember being like, you must be lying. Yeah. Like you must be lying. Yeah. But I, I agree with you. Like there is a point at which I think when you get to know your body, mm-hmm. when you like learn to really love her the way she deserves, yeah. like I think she loves you back. And it's, she absolutely does. And although, yeah, we always have days where we're like, you can pick at things. I think you can get to, a, I get to a point, I'm at a point now where I can look at my body in the mirror naked and it's like, Thanks, buddy. Exactly. Like, <laughs> go, girl. Ex- exactly. <laughs> you know? And it's a it's a really it's a really, freeing yeah. feeling is yes. really what it comes down to. Yeah, and yeah. when you have that feeling, the stress goes away. Yeah. And when the stress goes away, your body relaxes. Yeah. And when your body relaxes, yeah. it lets go. Yes. That that trickle effect all the way down. It lets go. It you really know, is. and then that's yeah. when everything comes into play. Yeah. You know, yes, I am on um, hormone replacement therapy. Mm. There's no way that I could be the way I am today without it. Just As full you disclosure. Should, if it works for you. Oh, why it works not? for me. Yeah. Absolutely. But here's the thing too is that so many women now or back when were so afraid yeah. of the hormone replacement therapy yeah. because That's they were led to out. believe mm-hmm. it's bad for you. It's going to create cancer. It's going to do this. Well, Pretty much anything nowadays can create cancer. I mean, I hate to say it. Keep we eating can your McDonald's, but it's, don't take your hormones. Thank like. you. Thank you. One hundred percent. You oh, know. Boy. Um, you keep breathing the air, but <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> it's it's as fuck, where was I going with that? Yeah. I just totally lost my train of thought. But my point is, is just just that as you get older, and oh, the hormone replacement therapy. Yeah. A lot of women are like, well, I can't do that. My my grandmother had breast cancer. Okay, great. If it runs in your family, then yes, absolutely check it out. But the minute I went on hormones, I went to my gynecologist and I asked him, I said, how bad are these? Because I, I'm feeling amazing. He goes, as long as they're in balance, you're fine. Yeah. Just keep them in balance. Do your blood work every six months. Keep them in balance. Yeah. Everything is cool. And I feel like a million bucks. I love that. My sex drive is high. Yes. My energy is high. I can out train some 20 year olds oh, out I there. Gladiators are coming around. And I swear to God, if they said, hey, you know what? We're rebooting and you want to come back on, I would do it in two seconds. Oh my God. My knees amazing. might hurt a little bit. Yeah. I might not be able to move the next morning, yeah. but man, I would absolutely a thousand percent go for it. Yeah. I love that. I think I think what what women deserve are options and yeah. education and knowledge, and also recognizing. I think what is really important for women to understand about hor- you know bioidenticals or hormone replacement therapy is that it addresses the production. Yeah. So this kind of comes back to what we were saying before. You still need to make sure you're doing the work so that you're metabolizing them and you're absorbing them. If we haven't done this underlying work, if we have some loss of function somewhere, if we're not eating well for our body or moving or all these things, then it's not going to work as well as it should. Just like any supplement or tool we were talking about. 100%. Do the under, like do yourself this favor. Do the work. And lock it in. Do the work. You know, and that's the other thing. There are so many different types and, you know, creams and pellets and everything else. And Mm -hmm. my doctor almost wanted, believe it or not, to stop giving me my testosterone. Mm. (laughs) Are you kidding me? She goes, oh yeah, um, the government doesn't really want to give it to you guys anymore. What? They're putting on a schedule. They're going to put it on a schedule one or two or whatever the schedule was, you know, and they just don't think. And I was like, okay, wait, let me get this straight. They would rather us go on 
antidepressants and birth control rather than give us testosterone? Are we going to become too too strong for them? I mean, what's the deal? I mean, <laughs> we want to be kept in a small, tidy box, Lori. So yes. quiet and yes. manageable. Yes. And that's your role. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Don't don't ruffle the feathers. Let's all stay quiet and calm. This yeah. is why. Yeah. But it's crazy out there like that. But I really I am so thankful that you're doing this. Thank you. Because it needs to be talked about. More and more women need to be it, the conversation yeah. needs to be there. Yeah, they, they need to be able to go to someone. Yes. You know, now yeah. you have your podcast, Period Whisper, and yeah. I know that it, it's thriving and doing well. And you also have like nutritional and coaching and everything else. Where can people actually find you? Yeah. So you can come hang out, you know, on the on Instagram at Bria underscore period underscore whisper, or you can find me at Bria. Slower, the please. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start a speed talk. I'm so excited. <laughs> Hanging out with ice. <laughs> okay. You can come hang out on Instagram at Bria underscore period underscore whisperer or find me at the period whisperer, Bria, the period whisperer.com and, and the podcast anywhere you get your podcasts. So. Yeah. I was listening to it while I was getting my lashes done and ah. I was like, God, I love this. This is so cool. Thank you. Because again, it's just not, nobody's talking about it. Yeah. And I know there's different women out there talking about it. Yeah. And it was, I love, I do. I love social media. I stumbled on you. You did. I stumbled I was on you. Wondering how we connected. <laughs> I stumbled on you. I mean, obviously, I think it was probably through a little V shreddy, yeah. you yeah. know, V shred. But I think it was because Vince was on your podcast. Yes. Yeah. And somebody posted it. Mm -hmm. I, you could have. It could have been on your little short. Like and I don't know. I found yeah. it, and I was just like. <gasps> This woman's awesome. Aww, I got to have her on my you. podcast. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I appreciate what you do. And I think more women need to know like how to be more in their life and not just less on a scale and that this is like the time to do it. So like, let's lean in, let's go through it and let's get it done. All right. So Bria, we've talked about hormones do you got dogs? Do you have I kids? Do you have, I have a dog, yes. I'm, what I'm, kind of dog? He's a white lab. He's like a big, like 90-pound white lab. He's gorgeous and such That's a dog. That's so His cool. Jax. Okay. <laughs> and you have two kids. Two kids, yep. And what are their names? Tessa and James. Very cool. Yes. Yeah. And you're from Canada. I am originally Canadian. <laughs> Hello, Canada. <laughs> to my Canadians. Um, I was actually up there and I did breakfast TV. Yeah. Oh, yes. Breakfast yeah. television. I love it. Yeah. Um, and then I was supposed to be doing the social. Okay. Which was like that. the view here. Yeah. But that mm -hmm. one got canceled um, till later date. But yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. I'm, I'm, but now you're in, in Arizona area. Yeah, I'm in Arizona. The hottest state of the United States. really hot. Do you play <laughs> golf or anything fun? I'm not a golfer, no. Do you do anything? What do you do for fun? Besides talk about hormones and perimenopause. <laughs> I do love that, Laura. I really do. And I and I do love being active. Like I love hiking and things like that. Um, I My wife and I travel a lot, so we love doing that. Um, and, you know, life's, I'd say life is pretty busy, but what I do for fun is, yeah, I love to hang out with friends. What I do you want to be when dancing. you grow up? <laughs> I want to be you. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> kind of. I mean, like, I'd love to continue to be super fit and be amazing and interview people. Um, you know, I think the big thing for me is, like, I, I love having fun. I love feeling good in my body. I love connecting with people. It's like one of my favorite things. I like I too. love meeting interesting people yeah. and hearing their story. Um, and I really, I, you know, I really want to spread this message far and wide for sure that women, so that women understand how to like really take hold of their own health and yeah. love themselves that way. Um, and I want to see the world. Well, I appreciate you. Yeah. And I appreciate what you're doing for all the women out there. Thank I think you. it's amazing. Thank you. And um, I'd love to have you back on with when we have more time. Yes. <laughs> you know? I'm in. But um, when I come out to Arizona, I'm stopping by and saying <gasps> hi. I would love that. You can meet my dog. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. Thank you, Bria, for coming out and being on my podcast today. Thank I know you, you traveled from Arizona to come in person, which is awesome. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you for having me. And um, everybody knows you know where to find her. She's on Instagram. Are you on any other platforms? Facebook, TikTok? Facebook, TikTok. All the platforms. All the platforms. Just, <laughs> all the just platforms. Go, just find her. You'll yeah. find her. Bria the period whisperer. Yes. That's it. Super easy. <laughs> Until then, thank you for listening to Chillin' with Ice. And this is where legends live on. Peace out. Thank you so much for listening to Chillin' with Ice. 
And don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share wherever you listen to your podcasts. Remember to follow us on Patreon and YouTube at Chillin' With Ice. And on Instagram and TikTok, you can follow me at lori.ice.fetrick. I look forward to chilling with you next time here on Chillin' With Ice.